Welcome to This Week in Racing, a very open wheel heavy episode with the United States Grand Prix happening in Austin, Texas. A bunch of F1 news has dropped, including TV partnerships and the 2021 regulations. We're also going to be talking about James Hinchcliffe and his ongoing drama with Aero, Schmidt, Peterson, McLaren, SP, whatever the heck that team name is. Uh, it is... It is getting worse by the day, the more details that continue to come out about that. But we do have some NASCAR things to talk about as well, and it involves a major Japanese auto manufacturer with a big H in the logo. Let's get into it. ESPN has renewed its Formula One contract for three more years to broadcast the series, and the thing that's the best about this for race fans is that the races will continue to be commercial free. That was something that was rumored to be going away, and thankfully, it is not. Formula One stays in the United States, and it stays commercial free. Keeping with the Formula One theme, the 2021 regulations were finally released and there are some pretty major changes coming to Formula One. First and perhaps the most important is the cost cap. This is something that Formula One has worked to try to uh, get past for quite some time and they have finally done it with a cost cap of $175 million per car per year. Now, this does only applies to the design of the automobile itself. It doesn't apply to the rest of the things uh, to do with the team, uh, hiring drivers or crew members or whatever. Uh, so it's a cost cap, but it's only going to cut so much of the budget. It's not going to be a huge uh, game changer from that perspective. Some of the things that they are doing to the cars to help bring the cost down are to go to some spec parts. Now, obviously, Formula One is not going to become a spec series by any stretch of the imagination. The cars are still going to be designed and built by the teams, um, but they are introducing some controlled parts uh, for either uh, rules reasons to try to keep everything as even as possible or also obviously to try to mitigate cost though again I kind of question whether or not that will end up working as kind of history has shown that that is usually the opposite but the biggest change in terms of the raceability of the cars is going away from flat bottom cars which uh, Formula One cars have been since the 80s and making a return to ground effects. Now many people have made the comparison with this car uh, to modern Indy cars and uh, that may be end up where Formula One is headed uh, direction wise. Now will they totally race like Indy cars? Probably not. Again Formula One despite a lot of these restrictions that they are now putting on the design of the cars, it is still a development series, and even if there's a cost cap, ordinarily speaking, the, the teams with the biggest budget, the most resources, and the best people will still go to the front. And to be honest with you, as a race fan, that's what Formula One is, and that's the way Formula One should remain. But if this helps get some more competitive racing out there, I'm all for it. Aero McLaren SP have made their drivers official, and of course this is not the first time we're going to be talking about this team and the drama uh, surrounding it today, but suffice it to say, they've made some good choices on the absolute uh, talent that these two drivers, Oliver Askew and Pato Award, potentially bring to the table. They are the last two Indy Lights champions, and the interesting thing with that is that Pato Award actually beat Colton Herta, who has been such a sensational driver in IndyCar this year, to that Indy Lights championship. Uh, so there's obviously a lot of untapped potential there, and Askew's a complete unknown, but again, he's risen through the ranks so quickly and so effectively. You've got to imagine uh, that this is, in terms of a long-term choice, strictly speaking about the team and its future, um, I think this is a pretty good one going forward with these two drivers. And Honda may be heading to NASCAR. A report from Autosport states that the manufacturer is interested, if the rules are right, to make a move to NASCAR. Now, this is the part where things start to get complicated. If Honda were to move to NASCAR, it would effectively end both their IMSA 
and IndyCar programs based on the amount of commitment a manufacturer needs to commit to NASCAR, similar to what we kind of saw with Toyota in the mid-2000s. Toyota was incredibly involved in everything but NASCAR across American motorsports, but then once they had to make that switch, they completely changed their focus and were all in on NASCAR. And it seems like if NASCAR makes an attractive enough offer to Honda that they would be willing uh, to put all their chips uh, in the in the bag, so to speak, to try to move to NASCAR and be successful there. Uh, I have to tell you, this race fan uh, is not particularly interested in that eventuality uh, because it would certainly hurt the other series in the United States uh, if Honda were to make a move to NASCAR and then uh, leave the other series that they participate in because they are such a strong part of series like IMSA and IndyCar. But here's the big thing, and this is comes from Adam Stern's Twitter, uh, a quote from the Toronto Star, which really made their rounds this morning, and uh, many people were pretty upset to read this. Uh, Arrow McLaren SP will pay James Hinchcliffe his salary, estimated in the neighborhood of somewhere uh, around half a million dollars, U.S. dollars per year. But to earn it, he will have to go to the races and be in their hospitality unit, shake hands with people, and talk about racing. Now, originally, I had put in my video, because when it came out, uh, it certainly seemed like, when this news broke anyway, that H James Hinchcliffe had been fired from Aero McLaren SP. Um, by the time you're seeing this video, I will have almost certainly changed the title and thumbnail of that video because he has not been fired. Uh, in fact, this is, in my opinion, much worse because you now have a driver who is locked into a contract that seems pretty ironclad from the perspective of if you aren't driving for somebody else, uh, you had better be at the track anyway because we need you to be our uh, extra highly paid PR person. Um, in my opinion, this is not a very good look. Uh, from And it's funny because they want James Hinchcliffe to be a, essentially a PR person for the team, or at least that's what they're willing, as Zach Brown has put it several times when talking about it, uh, this is the way they are going to honor the contract that they have in place with, with James Hinchcliffe. <sighs> It's not great. It's it's not a good situation, and I do not envy James Hinchcliffe in the least bit that he is in this situation. Because essentially, this is my opinion. This is how it looks to me. It seems like when all these new partners came together, they looked at the team and they decided on a direction, and that direction is clearly Oliver Askew and Pato Award. But the unfortunate thing was there was a loose string and that was the fact that James Hinchcliffe had one extra year on his contract so it seems to me that the determination was made how can we get rid of Hinchcliffe without having to pay him half a million dollars to not drive for us and this is what they've come up with because apparently if James does not show up at these races and doesn't have a ride somewhere else to do this uh, PR stuff for Aero SPM. He will be uh, in violation of the contract and then he will be fired. And then the original title of my video will be uh, will be correct again. Uh, but if they if they fire him without due cause, meaning, well, we just picked another driver. Thanks, Hinch. Get out of here. Then they, they meaning Aero, Schmidt, McLaren, Peterson, whatever, open themselves up to potential legal action or, or what have you from James Hinchcliffe's camp. And, you know, unfortunately, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to totally paint them as the villains here. I mean, this is this is business. I don't necessarily think it's personal. I mean, this is the way that, that Aero, McLaren, SP needed to protect themselves uh, even if in the court of public opinion, they are obviously not very well liked right now. I don't think that's particularly uh, a shock to anybody. Uh, but they definitely did not want to be held to any legal ramifications. And I guess this is the way to do it. So 
you know, it, it, it's weird because when all this became official, there was so much talk about, especially out of their camp, about continuing to push this narrative of we are honoring the contract with James. We're sorry it didn't work out X, Y and Z. Um, but now this next season, <laughs> James is put in the very uncompromising position of where he is if he is going to earn his paycheck, which he is owed based on the contract, he now has to go through this unflattering process of showing up at the racetrack, seeing your former car, your former team being driven by the driver who replaced you, uh, this new management coming in, uh, and the people who made this decision that you will not drive race cars anymore, which I imagine is one of the things that James Hinchcliffe believes in his heart of hearts, he's been placed on the, you know, the planet Earth to do, is now unable to do it. And not only that, now you have to sit there and watch this process take place and have to answer all the questions from the guests, from the sponsors who aren't directly related to the team, uh, that, well, why aren't you out there if you're a race car driver who's employed on our team? And, uh, and at the very least, he's going to have to hear, oh, boy, James, I'm sorry you're not out there right now. I mean, I get it. A lot of people, I saw a lot of comments that, f quite frankly, I thought were a little bit tone deaf that were saying, well, for half a million dollars, I'll stand in the hospitality tent and take all these questions. <laughs> but, but I, you know, that's valid, I suppose. People are different. Um but thinking about this just purely from an emotional standpoint, and I know most of the times emotions aren't aren't the most valid things in the entire world. But boy, oh boy, it's I, I would be very surprised if and and you know again I don't think it's much of a controversial take to say Hinchcliffe has been done dirty in this deal. Um, it's not a f total pr that's not a tr provable fact, obviously. But in my opinion, and the opinion of a lot of other people, he's been done very dirty here. Why on earth, especially if you're James Hinchcliffe, and it, you know you've been paid half a million dollars a year for for now five years uh, at Aero Schmidt Peterson, just period. There, uh, he was a national spokesperson for Honda. I'm sure that doesn't exactly pay peanuts. Um, I'm sure he's he's good financially. I don't see in any way that he he would want or should put up with this. Honestly, you know, if I'm James Hinchcliffe, and I'm obviously not, but if I'm sitting there in this situation, I, I tell him to go pound sand and fire me because I'm not going to show up and, and sit in your hospitality tent and pretend like everything's good when it, when it very clearly isn't. And whether or not, you know, the people on the other side the corporate side of this decision have anything personal against James Hinchcliffe or not. It's really irrelevant, uh, in my opinion. He's been done dirty, uh, and, you know, should he put up, should he have to put up with sitting in a hospitality tent, which is, um, you know, what, what, whatever your opinion of what James Hinchcliffe's driving ability is, I, I think... I think that's probably below him at this point. He's an accomplished enough driver that if he wa he wants to be at the racetrack and he feels fit and able to drive, he should probably be in a race car. That's my opinion. Um, and this whole situation, the whole thing is just unfortunate because, you know, and, and this was another thing that just came out recently. I mean, literally in the last couple of, of day or uh, minutes that Zach Brown offered him some, you know, oh, well, we consider him for an Indy 500 ride, but consideration for what if if fernando doesn't show up i guess we'll put james in the car for one race um yeah it's it's not it's not a good this has not been handled very well at all in my opinion and and the more details that come out of it the worse it gets and quite frankly again i, I hope james gets out of this situation uh in the in the best way for him possible because otherwise this is <laughs> It's not good. It's not good, and I'm sure. I'm sure this is not the end of it. I'm guessing it's going to escalate even further uh, from here. And not only that, think about this: if he is sitting in that Honda house or the in the hospitality tent for Aero Schmidt Peterson, which is a Chevy team, he can't be contracted to Honda either, which is taking more money off of his plate. So, not a good situation. Not good at all. 
So let me know what you think down in the comments section below. I'm sure all of this stuff is going to continue to develop. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more motorsport content, and I will see you in the next video.